The Telecom Tower is a constant reminder of the telecommunications which are the electronic arteries of the nation's life. With its facilities, the tower is a vital link in the thousands of telephone circuits between Sydney and Melbourne. Call STD and you're through. Television is our window on the world, providing news, sport and entertainment from interstate and overseas. A busy man can relax, confident in the paging unit which will alert him in an emergency, wherever he is. FM stereo broadcasts originating in the distant ABC studios in Adelaide retain their clarity in transmission, while recent technical developments allow several two-way radio channels to operate from a single antenna. The tower's all-weather radio telephone links keep rangers and farmers in constant touch with the city's facilities. And in a place where tourism's big business Canberra's Telecom Tower is providing a magnet for visitors eager for a bird's eye view of the capital. Canberra has been for many years an important crossroad in the nation's broadband communications network of coaxial cable and microwave radio links. For much of that time, the repeater station complex on Red Hill was the hub for trunkline telephone traffic. Transmitted by microwave radio, as well as for relaying of television programs. However, this location was limited in its capacity to satisfy future needs. Planning for Canberra's central parliamentary area had also indicated that the Red Hill facility should be relocated at a more suitable site. And so, by 1970, the then Australian Post Office was considering the possibility of building a strategically located multi-purpose communications tower in the Canberra region. The first indication that the tower project was really underway came with the appearance of a dimple five meters deep on the face of Black Mountain. Engineers and architects of the Department of Construction made the final assessment of the excavation to confirm that the completed foundation would have the required strength and stability. Into the cavity went a woven basket of reinforcing rods to await the arrival of the first of many hundreds of loads of concrete that were to climb this hill before the tower was complete. The foundation alone took 630 cubic meters of concrete delivered in 158 truckloads. To mold the tapering shaft of the tower, adjustable climbing forms were used. These flexible steel sections made up of cast which could be raised and progressively reduced in diameter as the shaft tapered from a 13 meter girth at the base to 4 meters at the top. As each stage of the tower was completed, the base of the internal construction rig was lifted up to the next position and fixed into place. Then the outer shell of the mold was raised using a hydraulic ram. After the fitting of reinforcing rods, the inner form was lifted up with chain blocks. Then, with both forms supported on fittings cast into the level below, the concrete was poured into the gap between the forms. To complete the tower shaft, this entire cycle of casting, lifting and pouring the concrete was repeated 60 times. A noteworthy feature of the work was the construction of the decks which form the telecom and visitors areas. The lower section is devoted to telecom use with the three levels housing the radio telephone facilities. Construction of this area commenced on the ground at the foot of the mountain with the assembly of the angled formwork for the conical shell. Then, piece by piece, this was lifted into place at the 30 meter mark and supported by high tensile bolts slanting back to the tower shaft.
concrete poured into this formwork was later pre-stressed around its circumference, providing a holding force which locks it to the tower shaft. This same formwork was to be used later for constructing the conical segment of the visitor's deck, while simultaneously work proceeded with floors and partitions in the various levels below. During construction, rollers and motors were fitted to rotate a section of the restaurant floor, one complete circuit every 83 minutes, and so give the diners a continuously changing outlook. When Black Mountain was selected as a television transmitting site in 1960, good TV reception, which could be achieved from this location, enabled indoor aerials to be used throughout the Canberra region while also providing a satisfactory coverage into nearby areas of New South Wales. As Canberra's suburbs grew and the second TV station was established, technical problems arose, such as ghosting, giving multiple images on the screen. Putting both TV station antennas on the one structure was the answer to the problem. The telecom tower provided the means with its lattice steel mast rising 65 metres above the top of the concrete shaft. Onto the highest point of the tower were hauled the 32 panels of the TV antenna array. The culmination of the co-masting scheme which brings to Canberra high quality reception of both the national and commercial television programs in addition to the ABC FM broadcasts. Far below in the basement, more work was going on to prepare the theaterettes and display areas which will introduce visitors to the tower's technical operations. From the city, nothing could be seen of the activity at the foot of the tower where the summit of Black Mountain was being groomed to give tourists convenient access to the mountain top. The original masts, transmitter halls and studios of Canberra's television stations were removed and the raw ground graded to provide space for the buses and cars to park close to the tower's concourse and the first lookout. The road was widened to cater for the increased traffic, retaining the natural bush close by and preserving a harmony between the public areas and the surrounding mountain reserve. Now the years of planning and building have been done. The last of the rubble has been cleared away and technicians have moved in to take over the control consoles. The telecom tower is complete. Its doors are open to the public. Crowding to the windows of the viewing gallery, 60 metres above the bronze plaque that surveyors have used to mark the mountain summit. Pause for a snack or a cup of coffee before you move to the stairs and climb to the open viewing platform. You'd need wings to get a better view of this garden city. 300 metres below, a city where sunlight sparkles on the reaches of the lake named for Canberra's designer, Walter Burley Griffin. Canberra is host to more than two and a half million visitors every year, questioning curious people who will eagerly tour the special displays in the tower's basement. Models, pictures and charts will introduce thousands of adults and children to the technical wonders above them, and they'll discover the importance of the tower in providing electronic communication facilities in a variety of ways that everyone will use, in some way or another, every day of the year. Experience around the world has proved the value of a telecommunications tower like this, and here's a tower designed to meet the demands of technology today, as well as the years ahead. The tower has been established in Canberra as a vital link for telephone and similar essential communications traffic between Australia's capital cities. 
and as a single transmission point for a wide range of radio communications and television services. Equally, the people of the national capital see the tower as a valuable tourist asset, a landmark on the summit of Black Mountain set in a nature reserve where animal and plant life remain undisturbed. Canberra has joined the great cities of the globe with Telecom Australia's new telecommunications tower, linking the cities of this vast continent with the world. Thank <music> you.